So, okay. Let me start. Uh, welcome, uh, greetings from Switzerland. Uh, in this session, I will introduce the image enhancement techniques of Neighbor, which include my projects from 2019 to 2020. As the subtitle says, our aim is not only in addressing the problem, but solving it in a simple and intuitive way while bringing a huge improvement over the previous method. Traditionally, the definition of image enhancement was the process that manipulates the pixels of digital images so that the image quality become better in many aspects, like authenticity or resolution. This typically includes image restoration tasks. For example, you can remove noise, sharpen, or brighten an image, making it easier to identify key features. Plus, if we think a little more flexible, this definition can be also extended to the generation or translation task that aims to get an authentic image. You can think this as learning some arbitrary filters that you would use to Photoshop uh, your photographs. In this regime, uh, we present three methods that are recently published in ICCV19 and uh, CVPR this year. Again, our goal is to address these problems as simple as possible while giving a good improvement over the previous state-of-the-art algorithm. So first, let me introduce about our photorealistic star transfer model using uh, wavelet transforms, uh, which is still a crunch sota in this area as far as I know. When machine learning people hear about star transfer, most of them might recall this artistic star transfer. Instead of using handcrafted uh, feature extractors like Wavelet, uh, Gaddy et al. used uh, CNN representation to extract the style of one image, Sarah Van Gogh, and impose it onto the other image while you maintain its content. This is how it works. Uh, so basically what you do is uh, you want to match the uh, covariance it, it actually it is not the exact covariance since it is not subtracting the mean of the feature. So basically, what it does is it, it is called gram metrics. You want to uh, have a noise which matches with the uh, higher order statistics in the feature space with the style, so that you are actually calculating the gram metrics twice for noise and the style, and you match it in each uh, scale of the feature spaces. So instead of using the handcrafted uh, feature extractor, this algorithm proposed to use neural network. That is different. And by constraining the network further to maintain the spatial information of a content image, uh, uh, this algorithm allows us, for example, to have a picture that has a texture of the desired painting. So this is because like a grand metric uh, is kind of like mixing up every uh, special location information. So they only have a, a correlated relationship between the pixels. Uh, while if you just uh, uh, subtract between the, uh, uh, between the uh, features of content and the noise, it still maintains the uh, location information of the pixels. So uh, structure information uh, maintains, should be maintained to minimize this loss. Meanwhile, there is another kind of star transfer called photorealistic star transfer. This problem is harder than the artistic stylization in that it has to satisfy two contradicting uh, objectives simultaneously. Uh, one is to achieve very locally drastic effect. For example, you can see here, it, it needs to uh, turn on the light. While these effects should not uh, distort the edges and the regular patterns, uh, for example, the windows re should remain aligned while you are kind of changing the uh, image of the day to the night. So to solve this problem, previous studies started from modifying artistic star transform algorithms such as uh, uh, WCT, which is the abbreviation of the uh, whitening and calling transform. Uh, WCT is one of the most recent model in artistic star transfer. Um, what it does is first they train an uh, autoencoder that reconstructs its 
input of natural images. Uh, here the encoder is region in a torque edit street and the decoder is its mirror architecture. So if the training was successful, we can say that the important features for representing images are learned well. And using this, they perform stylization by exploiting whitening and coloring transform at the learned DNA feature state. So more specifically, this is nothing but a eigenvalue decomposition and recomposition where whitening is the operation that actually normalizes the covariance matrix of the content feature to wash out its content uh, style. As you can see here, this was the content and it is now washed out, style is washed out. Uh, so because what you want is to color this with the style image features, they again feed forward the style image to the network and project the whitened uh, content vector onto the eigenspace of style image. So this colors the covariance so that uh, now the texture or style of the input is changes. However, because a single run uh, was not enough to get a strong effect, they had to perform murky level stylization, which recursively inputs the output of the previous stylization result. While this is good for artistic stylization, it is definitely minus to the photorealism. As you can see in the images, the images are more distorted as you uh, perform more uh, stylization recursively. Uh, sorry. Uh, so in 2018 ECCV, the authors of photo uh, realistic WCT have pointed out that this distortion actually comes from the lossy max, max pooling operation in the encoder because the uh, special information is already lost during the encoding step, while the decoder fails to compensate it, this loss uh, while decoding from the insufficient information from the encoder. Uh, to address this, they propose to use unpooling operation uh, in the decoder instead of nearest upsampling operation in the previous like uh, uh, WCT artistic model, uh, which now has a mask information uh, that has information where the max pooling happened in the encoder. By providing the index where the max pooling happened, they argued that the decoder can better reconstruct the image without distortion. So, uh, to, but if you see the result, yes, it helped a little, but uh, the improvement was not that uh, sufficient. As you can see this uh, from this difference, the, from the artistic uh, stylization result to the photorealistic of city, the improvement was not that uh, significant. So they had to devise one another like a, uh, 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 another like a post-processing step called smoothing. Uh, this gave a large enhancement on, a, on its quality. However, not only does the post-processing literally add another step after the network entrance, uh, which is annoying, but also the post-processing requires to calculate the graph Laplacian metrics in the pixel domain, which is computationally very costly. Uh, so as you can see here, the, 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 this post-processing was so heavy that it was impossible to like process the uh, image size over 1K. Uh, on the other hand, ours can provide a comparable or better research while it is fast since it only performs a single fit board without any post-processing. So, so it is, you, as you can see, even though we do not use any post-processing or like with a single fit board, the result is already uh, comparable or sometimes better than the previous uh, state-of-the-art algorithm. So how do we do this? Uh, the key intuition is to constrain the function space of the network to have a good properties called good perfect reconstruction condition. This is as follows. Like uh, it looks kind of intimidating, but what it says is we need a good operate. We need the network needs to learn a good uh, filter, which is invertible. Uh, so, for example, max pooling is never invertible because it is already losing uh, uh, three quarter of the uh, information. So, wow, what is the uh, a substitute? A better substitute is like uh, wave OD and goody wavelets. Uh, which is guaranteed to like uh, 
have perfect reconstruction condition already satisfying it so that it is also invertible without any loss of information and it actually have, is encoding uh, uh, well and also known to decode the uh, good features well of the, in the image domain. So what it, we did is instead of using the pooling and um, uh, unpooling operation in the encoder and decoder structure, we substituted every uh, max pooling and uh, unpooling or nearest to sampling to the uh, wavelet decode, decomposition and reconstruction uh, module. So it is actually comprised of these four channels, which is uh, each of which are the components of its uh, hard wavelet. So the first uh, component looks like an average filter. Uh, and others like a vertical, uh, horizontal, or diagonal edges. So this is basically the fixed uh, filter as uh, does the max pooling uh, uh, module. Uh, so we do not learn this, but just uh, substitute max pooling into this uh, slightly more channel with four channels uh, into the network. Uh, though this uh, fix is quite simple, the results are quite interesting. Uh, so if we stylize every uh, uh, component of the network, uh, ours are giving a, a better result than the previous data. And we also, it is more interpretable since if we just uh, do not uh, stylize the uh, high frequency component, it actually uh, remains the uh, high frequency component of the, actually the edge of the image, uh, uh, like uh, unstylized, so that uh, we can we can show we are showing that by showing this by that uh, our uh, network is working as uh, we expect it, uh, and we also uh, remove the multi-level stylization. So because by uh, uh, substituting every uh, uh, every uh, max pooling to the uh, wavelet. Uh, uh, corrected transform. Now, uh, just each while, while the features are encoded in, and decoded, we can substitute the multi-level stylization as a single fit for. So, and this actually makes the our network more more le uh, more or less better because it has a less error propagation due to the recursive input and output like a real uh, uh, iteration. And it gives a better stylization and faster model because we do not have to retain like multiple models. Then sometimes it is 800 times uh, faster than the previous method, as well as because we do not have to have four models for like a recursive input. We have a lighter model in memory. And actually it is stronger in that, that we, can, we are the first model which can process uh, uh, the 1K size resolution image under four seconds. This is our the qualitative research, so that this is compared to the uh, artistic models, or we are for sure having a better photorealism. But not only for the uh, compared to the uh, artistic one, we have better research to the photorealistic state of the previous state of the art. As you can see, uh, this is the optimization technique, uh, which is really slow, but still having a cartoonized artifact, which is kind of smoothed out and not real realistic. And this was the previous state of the art using the feed for network, but still having some like artifacts, uh, unrealistic artifacts, so that they devise, if they devise their like a post-processing step, they have certainly uh, better research, uh, but still because of uh, that post-processing step, that is not only, they are not only slow, but also uh, having that smoothed out or washed out artifacts in the uh, fine grain, uh, fine details. Well, but in our methods, that's not even though we do not use any post processing step, uh, as well as like uh, we do not do the multi level stylization, we have a strong like a stylization effect while retaining the uh, fine details, uh, uh, giving uh, authentic research. So, uh, this is also the another positive side effect of a uh, wavelet transform, which has a stable uh, stylization effect. Even though we do not give any temporal consistency loss in the video frame, because wavelets are uh, giving a stable uh, stylization uh, result, uh, even though we independently process the video frame by frame, uh, it does not have a, a artifact in the 
uh, uh, stylized research, so they're giving this kind of consistent research over the frames. Uh, while the uh, previous SOTA uh, gives a really uh, like a spurious artifacts, uh, especially seen in the like this kind of frame. So these are the uh, quantitative research. So users like ours the best, and we are faster. Uh, this is another like a quantitative measure we measured because the photorealism can be thought as that the content should not change a lot uh, so that we uh, calculated the SSIM with the content, uh, the stylized image with the uh, content and uh, it is higher the better. So we are in all in here and gram loss is lower the better uh, so that the right upper corner is the ideal case and our models are uh, near there. So uh, in summary, uh, our method was simple, giving a simple solution, just substituting all cooling layers into wavelet filters. But it, it is, though it is simple, it was so effective that uh, it was faster and giving a better research in stylization and giving us so, uh, beating us, uh, outperforming the uh, previous soda. So next is uh, the like. Uh, more traditional image enhancement uh, 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 method model. So we in this year we uh, proposed coupler, which is the first data augmentation method for various low-level vision tests. This is also another joint work with uh, uh, our uh, my intern. Uh, and uh, we first present a comprehensive analysis on the existing data augmentation method and propose our new method. So this is uh, to whet your appetite. These are some spoilers. Uh, we are actually the first to provide comprehensive analysis and source analysis on recent data application method on peak resolution. Um, and based on these analysis, we brought up with Coupler, the first data augmentation method that is specifically designed for low level vision tasks, uh, which gives a consistent and significant improvement in the super resolution task. Uh, moreover, by just applying our method on the old model, uh, we achieved state-of-the-art uh, performance in real-world super resolution competition, which is very competitive area these days. More surprisingly, uh, 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 our method was so general that it can be easily applied to the other uh, low-level vision tasks and improves the generalization of the model. So our motivation started from the following observation. Like the high level vision task, there is surprisingly no work that studies data augmentation for low level vision tasks. So we were curious of how much performance we can gain from applying the augmentation to the image restoration models. So while invest, investigating this, we found that uh, due to the characteristics of low level vision, you have to be really careful when you apply the augmentation that are originally developed for the high level vision task. So some methods like a cutout, which discards the pixel information, or the feature method, feature augmentation method, which has a large effect in the uh, 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 information because of its uh, receptive fields, uh, uh, it hurts actually the performance. So on the contrary, uh, we uh, found that the pixel space method can bring some Im improvement when applied carefully. For example, uh, cutout. Uh, if we uh, change the original cutout uh, percentage from 25% to 0.1%, which is actually just the two or three pixels in the patch, uh, this gives a slight or very marginal improvement, at least not uh, degrading the performance. And if uh, for the mix up and com mix uh, showed a marginal improvement also, but with some interesting points, uh, mix up brings quite a good performance gain to the model. Uh, so we hypothesize this is because like mix up at least do not have a sharp transition boundary uh, or discarding the pixels, so that it is it is kind of giving some augmentation effect to the model. To uh, test this. Hypothesis: We try to mix both methods, cut mix and the mix up. We call it cut mix up, so that uh, and we saw in, this indeed brings a better improvement than mix up and cut mix. Uh, based on this uh, analysis so far, we try to push further 
surprisingly, uh, we found that if we use RGB permutation or blending, color blending, that do not incur any structural modification to an image, the performance is boosted remarkably. Uh, these are these results naturally brought us to our uh, proposed method coupler, uh, which randomly cuts and pastes a low quality patch into a high quality image. Uh, since a uh, coupler cut and paste between the corresponding location of low resolution and high resolution patches, it minimizes the boundary effect uh, because it is like corresponding images of uh, exact location. So while it benefits still, but it benefits from utilizing entire pixel like cutout, which kind of discards the pixel. It also imposes the network to learn identity mapping, providing a good regularization effect to the SL model because it remain uh, leaves some points to be super resolved or some points not to be super resolved. So as you can see in this uh, example, after training. Uh, if the vanilla model without training with uh, Cutler, if it is, if the input has some part has a high, already high resolution uh, uh, ML, uh, pixels, it gives a over sharpening uh, artifact. So as you can see in the residual, there's a lot of like uh, uh, spurious uh, research, uh, uh, reconstruction research around the edges. But in our case, when the coupler is used in the uh, uh, augmentation, it actually uh, does not give an over sharpening artifact. So this also can be seen with other like a data sets. But not only over sharpening, it also uh, works with the other low level vision tests such as denoising so that it prevents the over smoothing in the same sense. So in this case, uh, coupler is, is now like uh, some part of the uh, patches remain uh, clean or like uh, only that part is noisy so that network has to learn uh, not only like uh, uh, how to super resolve or like denoise the image but also it has to adaptively learn which place it has to like super resolve or denoise the image so by doing so it learns how much it has to apply it uh, it's like uh, denoising or like a uh, uh, super resolution. So as you can see, if it, without any co augmentation with coupler, uh, uh, if the network is uh, trained on the higher uh, noise, it tends to uh, uh, denoise more so that giving a blurry uh, output when it uh, is given with, in the test time, when it is given with a low quality, uh, no, 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 uh, with a, a less uh, noise, but in our case, it actually gives more fine detail. And it also uh, is same in the JPEG uh, uh, artifact removal case. As you can see, there's some superior like uh, artifact near here, but it kind of gives a better result if it is trained with our augmentation method. Uh, we can further enhance the performance by a applying several methods together, which we call mixture of augmentation, MOA. So what it does is actually, uh, we only uh, use the uh, bunch of like augmentation methods that showed uh, the improvement individually. We kind of randomly select one of the, the uh, good augmentation methods and try apply it to the input in during the training time. And this boosted the uh, performance bar further so that you can, as you can see in the synthetic case, it is giving a, a 0.09 dB increment, increment but uh, the more surprisingly in real, actually realistic SR case, it gives a 0.27 uh, uh, dB increase uh, in when it is used with this MOA technique. So this simple strategy remarkably improves the performance achieving the state of the art in the real world test by just applying it with the uh, all uh, other like uh, just models already given uh, off the shelf models. So as you can see here, uh, our, the, this is, gives uh, at least a two, 0 0.22 dB improvement just apply by just applying the augmentation method during the training time. So again, in summary, uh, our like a solution was simple, just use Cutler, which is cutting and pasting the low quality image to the corresponding high quality image uh, by, or you use our curated list of augmentation methods to 
further improve the performance. Uh, it is so effective that it can uh, give a minimum 0.22 dB performance boosting of your model. So uh, yeah, please uh, use ours. And uh, for more details, please uh, refer to our paper. And let's move on to the another like uh, uh, super resolution model, which we uh, recently presented in uh, entire workshop, which is also one of the CBPR workshops this year. Uh, this is actually about the unsupervised image super resolution. And this is also the work with uh, my intern Namiok. Thanks to Namiok. Like, <coughs> this is, we, in this work, we uh, presented simple uh, baseline, but uh, remarkably, it achieved the state of the art. Actually, it's quite a simple, uh, impressionally simple. So uh, anyway, let, let's go on. So there's a level of supervision in super resolution like path. So uh, easily you can think of the supervised, uh, uh, which is typical uh, at far. You give a, a, a pairs of a low resolution and high resolution touches so that you can just uh, you uh, learn a function by supervised learning. Uh, sometimes it is quite hard. It would be it might be quite hard to get an exact pair. So maybe you can, but still you have a. Uh, unpaired uh, super resolution image set. So one pair, one set is just a bunch of low resolution and one pair of the, one set of data is just a bunch of high resolution image images. So they, their pixel distribution is at least similar. Then in this case, you, there's some kind of work that tries to uh, address this problem by using some cyclic consistency or something. Uh, but there is quite a f only a few models that can, could deal with unsupervised super resolution, which is actually about uh, the situation when there, when you only have a, a low resolution patches, which is quite common because sometimes high resolution or high quality images is quite hard to uh, uh, get it, right? So if you were to serve, solve this problem, what would you try first try? So these actually, well, this is how the current state of the art algorithm does. So what it does is actually, since you do not have a low resolution image, uh, and also you never uh, have a, actually a big uh, set of data sets uh, uh, in before your test time, what you do is you, if you have a single uh, uh, low resolution image, you train a really, really small network uh, with that only single image. And what you do is you make a network to learn uh, uh, one scale uh, lower and to super resolve into the original scale, still a low resolution. Then you apply it to the uh, high resolution and fine tune it a little. So this is kind of good in that uh, you only need a single image in the, uh, for, uh, in the uh, uh, training uh, testing time, uh, it can learn the internal statistics and use it to test a, a new image. But it is because you have to do everything training and uh, inference in online, like uh, and the test time, it has extremely high uh, in, uh, latency. And also, it, it is hard to benefit from a large capacity network since it has to learn with only a single uh, data set. Oh uh, yes, this is certainly one of the fanciest things you can do, but wouldn't there be more like simpler way to try and check first before considering this kind of complicated method? So well, this is what it thought. So uh, if you, we assume that at least for the low resolution or low quality images, it would be quite easier, easy to gather than just uh, gathering the high quality images. Then let's gather the low, quality, uh, low resolution images. And then you just uh, learn it offline as you do, as if you have a supervised learning uh, with the ladder. So what you do is, if you only have a low resolution image, you downscale into another lower, more lower like scale. And then you train a, uh, you train a, a, a network with that uh, scale. And then you kind of like uh, believe your network to be generalized well on in the, uh, upper scale, so that by, by just applying it to uh, the low resolution in the test time, uh, you will get the uh, super result result if 
you your network learned a good generalized version of the supervisor being function right even though you haven't seen actually the actual scale you want to supervise results good thing of this is you because it is just a feed forward in the uh, test time it must have a low latency and also because now you are assuming that there at least there are a bunch of training data sets you can enjoy every advantage of super uh, supervised framework so it is way much better. The uh, thing is, yes, we are just doing a supervised learning method at one scale lower space. And so it is so trivial, relying on its general availability on different scales. It is not that interesting. The thing is, though this line of study is really easy to think of and thus should have been investigated prior to any kind of like fancy technique, surprisingly, there are currently none, which never, nobody have investigated in this simple baseline. And even more is like this simple method of uh, performs the state of the art method with a dramatically shorter latency at runtime and significantly reduces the gap to the supervised model. Um, frankly, we ourselves also never thought this would be our main algorithm. After all, this was meant to be a basic baseline to start from. Uh, but we thought this is worth to report to the, this kind of blind side for the community to note that sometimes we have to first check the basis. Uh, we also noted this clearly in the paper saying that this simple uh, method should be used as the baseline to beat in the future. So we suspect that, uh, and also uh, this is actually the experimental result. As you can see in this uh, uh, table, this is the uh, current state of uh, the previous state of the art, uh, zero shot super resolution. As you can see, if you use just the, uh, our, our like simple uh, unsupervised super resolution model, you are one dB uh, better than the original state of the art, even though it is so simple. And it is more surprising me, actually, if you, uh, if you compare with the supervised uh, uh, model, Actually, the gap is not that big, only 0 0.2 dB or like so. Uh, so, uh, simple, same USR like uh, shows large improvement over the uh, previous state of the art, as well as it further reduced the gap to the super resolution, uh, uh, supervised uh, models using our vision. So, uh, yeah, this is also some investigation we have tried. So we. Uh, we also improved the previous data by uh, removing some uh, like uh, harmful data augmentation for the uh, uh, this kind of unsupervised case, as well as uh, we found that uh, this kind of task suffers from the noise in the low resolution because we only have a low resolution patches. So we never know the high quality image, but in the low resolution patches, there's also always some uh, noise. So if we just learn from the that low resolution patch and downscale from the downscale version of it, it only you it never the model can never learn how to to denoise and the clear pixel distribution. So what we did is we while we are downscaling in the training step, we made a data set to uh, first denoise it and downsampling it, and from that denoise and downsample. Uh, uh, no, 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 in the other way around. So that the, we down, from the down sample, downscaled uh, low resolution uh, patch, we kind of like try to uh, uh, resolve the denoise uh, low resolution patch original one. So by doing so, it learns the super resolution, uh, resolve uh, resolution function, as well as the clear pixel distribution. Yeah, and for sure, because it is a feed forward network, it is way much faster than the previous soda. Uh, these are the qualitative results. As you can see, this in the residual, the previous soda has a lot of like errors, but in the edge cases, we always have some like better research. And this is actually, we actually ranked first in PSNR and the and all SSIM, which is good for the structure similarity second. Uh, for the LPIF, it is kind of like a recent metric. It is lower the better uh, using the neural network metric, but it is, we were kind of four short in this metric. But 
anyway, yeah, we were the almost the best uh, in the traditional metrics in this uh, uh, setup. So again, a summary, like uh, our solution was so simple, like uh, just use the supervised learning uh, setup. Uh, it was effect so effective, so it can join the state of the art performance than the in the unsupervised SR world. So basically that's all. So in, these are the things uh, I prepared today. So maybe uh, please leave your contact information and feedback here in the uh, QR code. And these are the uh, QR codes for the uh, project. Thank you. If there is any uh, uh, question, I will now take the question. <laughs> 